On overdrive this week, the Maruti SX4 finally gets a diesel engine. TVS puts anti-lock brakes on its Apache RTR. Mercedes brings the G-Wagon to India. And all the racing action from the first two rounds of the Formula MRF Championships. Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I'm Shireen Bhan. As you can see, we've got a packed show lined up for you. So let's start with Maruti Suzuki. Now, the company is known for being a dominant leader in the hatchback segment. But over the past few months, Maruti Suzuki has been trying to make inroads into the premium and luxury sedan market with the Kizashi and now the SX4 diesel. Sirish brings you a road test. Some things are obvious. A car, for instance, has to have four tyres. Ideally, they should all be round. A car has to have an engine. And if a car in India has to compete with the Honda City in its segment, it has to have a diesel engine. So four years after Maruti Suzuki brought the SX4 to India, it finally gets the obvious thing. It gets the Swift's diesel engine. And now it's game on. From the outside, the SX4 remains unchanged. And except for discrete ZDI and DDIS badging, there is no telling this is a diesel before you crank her up. So it's not fresh, but neither is it dated. And it still looks like a nice sporty saloon with all the right muscular ingredients to stand around. Like the exteriors, the interiors too remain unchanged. So you get the same dashboard, the same brown colours which we saw on the facelifted SX4 and the same equipment levels. So you have an integrated stereo with a USB input, you have climate control, you have steering wheel mounted audio controls, a leather wrapped steering wheel, twin front airbags, ABS, you have almost everything. What you don't have is too much space. Rear, the knee room is a bit tight, the headroom is also a bit tight, so is shoulder room and it feels like a snug cabin, not as spacious as say the Honda City or even the Volkswagen Vento. The engine is the same 1.3 litre diesel engine from the Swift, an engine that we all love. But 75 horsepower would never have been enough for the SX4. This is after all much bigger and much heavier. And that's why the engine gets a variable geometry turbocharger, which boosts power up to 90 horsepower, which seems quite adequate in the SX4. The engine of course is refined, it is smooth, it is eager to rev and most importantly, it feels willing. And that suits the SX4's demeanour which after all is a sporty demeanour. The engine is 55 kilos heavier and so to account for the increased weight, the front suspension has been stiffened a bit but it's not something that you will notice and the SX4 remains a very involving car to drive. The platform after all has been adapted from the Swift and retains the Swift's fun to drive character. The steering for instance is delightful, it's responsive, it has great feedback and it's very quick and direct. What it is not is a great riding car. The SX4 was never great on ride quality and this doesn't change. Nothing changes, it's still stiff, especially on these big 16-inch tyres. You can't feel the small ripples in the road. Performance is adequate, with the 0 to 100 km per hour sprint taking 14.24 seconds and top speed of 164 km an hour. This compares very well with the Fiesta's 17.64 seconds. But it is no patch on the Verna's 12.4 seconds or the Vento's 11.7 seconds to 100 km an hour. So the big question, can the SX4 with a diesel engine take the fight to the Honda City? Well, I think it can. Prices haven't yet been announced, but I expect it to be no more than 80 to 90 thousand rupees more than the petrol SX4 versions. And that means the starting price of 8 lakh rupees going up to 9 lakh rupees which makes it cheaper than equivalent Honda City versions and that is a petrol. Also this engine, okay 90 horsepower might not sound like much but it does the job well. It always feels adequate and the SX4 never feels underpowered. In fact it always feels willing and always has something in reserve and that's a good thing especially with the SX4 sporty demeanour. It's been a long time coming but better late than never. 
Will the SX4 diesel have enough to dominate the segment? We'll bring you a comparo on a forthcoming episode of Overdrive. It's now time for us to talk two wheels. We sent Shumi down to Chennai for a story. We all know it's hot and humid in Chennai, but why exactly is the man standing next to a sprinkler? Let Shumi explain himself. If you're wondering what I'm doing here on this bright sunny day getting wet at this strange looking place, I'm at Vabco TVS's ABS testing facility near Chennai, the only one of its kind in the country. What this place has is a series of surfaces, all wet, all slippery, where we're going to test the new TVS Apache RTR 180 ABS. That's right, TVS has added anti-lock brakes to the bike and we're going to find out what it does for the motorcycle. What you see before you is the stock RTR 180. Well, actually, it's not. But if it wasn't for the tiny ABS sticker on the tank cowl, you wouldn't know this bike was any different. Look closer, however, and you will spot a tiny cover on the front wheel, which hides the speed sensor. There's a similar exposed version at the rear wheel, and you can also see the head of the ABS ECU sticking out from the front of the side panel. If you think that this is the ABS system on the bike, well, it's not. What this is, is a test rig that stops the bike from falling over, from people getting hurt during the tuning phase of the ABS. We're going to use it so that when we go out there on the slippery surface and try something, we're not going to crash and hurt ourselves. And you'll see in a minute, it's required. The ABS is a straightforward, two independent channel system controlled by one ECU. Simply put, the ABS computer monitors both wheels for rotation and when it detects a wheel about to lock, it can release and build pressure like any other ABS system would. What TVS engineers have managed brilliantly is to tune the system jointly developed with Continental for Indian conditions. I tried it on slow speed and on dirt and it responded perfectly. But it isn't until you try panic braking on the tracks, slippery surfaces with ABS off, on the Outrigger equipped RTR 180, that the need for and the utility of the ABS system sinks in. A long stable stop in an oil spill is much safer than a brush of the brake lever and instant fall. The more I tried out the system, the more impressed I was. That was super scary. The time I had the ABS off, I touched the brake and the bike was gone from under me. If it wasn't for the outrigger, I swear I would have fallen today and I would have hurt myself. What that means to me is that now I'm a convert. I used to believe that I'm an expert rider with good braking skill and I don't need ABS. Today, I think I need ABS and I think you should have it too. Time for a break, but when we return your queries on Auto Selector, the Mercedes G-Wagon and everything that's buzzing in the world of auto.